trainers, travelers, and battlers. Can I get a pink poke? Because what you know, let's go. Jake Devin, back at it with another video. Oh. Um, thank you for coming and thank you for watching. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe if you know my vibe. But today, for this video, what we're going to be talking about actually is Nightmare Cup still. I know there's a lot of a lot of hype about the, the regionals format and the, the regionals meta because we've had a lot of good announcements with leaderboards and whatnot coming out. The boy right here, not really ranked too high. Uh, we got a lot, lot, lot of work to do with that. I don't want to let you guys down. Hashtag battlers. But going in here, obviously you can see we're going to be battling Frampty Pants. We've done a lot of battles with this guy in the past and he has sweeped us, but we did a little better. Keep in mind again, though, these aren't really best ofs, just like my last video with the Pokey AK. These are just going to be uh, practice battles to test some stuff out. Now, the main Pokemon I want to talk about in today's video for the Nightmare Cup meta is obviously going to be Spiritomb, if you didn't already know. <laughs> um, so going in, he does open up with the Legacy Mudshot Polyrath, which I feel like that is going to be a pretty good threat if you don't have a direct answer for it, such as somebody like Shift Tree, um, Zatu, or any kind of Confusion users. Um, I like what I'm feeling about Legacy Mudshot Polyrath when it comes to having mud shot and uh, power up punch because it's not uh, I mean mud shot and power up punch I feel like he can do a little better against Bronzong in some scenarios than uh, perhaps other fighters can I don't know I could be wrong I know Lucario gets um, counter power up punch and shadow ball is going to be pretty ideal but I feel like legacy mud shot and uh, power up punch Polyrath has a, a great place you know especially with ice punch because he's going to get coverage against Zatu and Shift Tree and other things that are weak to ice in this meta. So he's all right. But Spiritomb, sorry, getting off track a little bit. Is Spiritomb right here, your boy, is he overrated? Um, when he, when the meta first came out, uh, PV Pokey had him ranked as number one, which um, kind of tilted a lot of people. And it tilted myself as well, because my first thought, if you didn't see my previous videos, was, okay, well, you banned Sableye, why didn't you ban Spiritomb, right? Because everybody's thinking about the dark and the ghost typing. Well, what it really comes down to is Spiritomb's stat spread and the move pool and the moves that he has access to. If you don't already know, all of his uh, charge moves that he's going to have access to, I'll put them right here, they're all going to be ghost type charge moves. And he only gets Faint Attack and uh, Sucker Punch as fast moves. Obviously, Sucker Punch is going to be the preferred because it's going to charge up faster. And for his charge moves, he gets Shadow Ball, which is good to have. I don't have that on mine right now. I need to get that added. But Shadow Ball, Shadow Sneak, and then Ominous Wind. Of course, what you're going to want to have is Ominous Wind and Shadow Ball if you are going to be running a Spiritomb. Uh, but is he overrated? That's really the, the question of the video and what I want to talk about. You can see he came in with this uh, Fire Fang Howdoom, which actually put in a bit of work, as you can see, against that Bronzong. It can also do some good work against Lucario because Fire Fang will be effective to both of them because they are steel typing. Um, now back to Spiritomb again. Is he overrated? Yes. Oh. I kind of feel like he is overrated. Obviously, if you've been checking PV Pokey and if you've been watching other people's discussions and videos, he was kind of overrated to begin with. Um, I think a lot of people anticipated that he would be much better than he actually is at the end of the day. Cause I've been doing a lot of test battles. Um, a lot of them I have not been recording, but I've done a lot more test battles with Spiritomb as a main part of my team. And honestly, I feel like when I do not run Spiritomb against the meta, I do much better. Really, at this point, I don't think I ran this lineup in this video at all. I was still sticking with the Lucario Gardevoir combo because that was working well for me to begin with. It's still it's still pretty solid. You know, don't don't sleep on them. It can it can end up being something very good. Maybe test it out yourself. See how you like the Lucario and Gardevoir being paired up. They do some good work. But when I ran um, a lot of test battles with Spiritomb, it did not perform that well. I feel like it definitely underperforms. And the reason being is because there are some great answers for Spiritomb. I mean, number one, you've got to keep in mind, there's a lot of good dark type Pokemon in this meta. Namely, um, Skunk Tank, Umbreon. Um, what's that? What's that? What's the Shift Tree? Yeah, Shift Tree. Uh, there's a lot of great dark type Pokemon and a lot I didn't even name, including Drapion, which is great, by the way. Um, but there's a lot of dark type Pokemon that are straight up going to resist all of the charge move that all of the charge moves that Spiritomb is going to have. And those dark type Pokemon can also provide coverage against Pokemon like Bronzong. So, I mean, if you have um, uh, 
a spare tomb and like Bronzong on the same team, that might not be such a great idea. You might you might want to rethink your strategies because again, keep in mind he only gets ghost type charge moves. So he's really at the end of the day, I feel like he's not an amazing choice. I mean, Shadow Ball can do some good work. Um, it's definitely if you're going to run Spear Tomb, I'm going to say 100% you're going to want Shadow Ball and Ominous Wind. If not, maybe just Ominous Wind. I don't know. I feel a little, little iffy on making a call on if you only have one move, which one should you get right now? My vote's going to be with Ominous Wind because it does still do a decent amount of damage, but also you could potentially get the boost from Ominous Wind, which Ominous Wind, which you cannot get from Shadow Ball. So that's another thing to keep in mind. But, I mean, Spiritomb, he is a direct answer for a lot of Pokemon that are also in the meta. Um, he does well, pretty well, depending on shields against um, uh, Zatu, as well as Alolan Raichu. Um, it's not, I really don't feel like it's an amazing choice, though, guys. I feel like he's underperformed, and he, he really hasn't done that well. I mean, you can see I opened up with it in this battle, and it was kind of bad news, because the first thing he came in with was Lucario. Granted... He let that ominous wind go unblocked, so we were able to put in some damage, and I felt like I didn't want the investment to go wasted at this point, so I used a shield on that power-up punch. But we got off another ominous wind. He was pretty smart not to block it at that point. There's really no point to blocking it. But then he comes in with the shift tree, which is going to deal amazing razor leaf neutral damage, and then just ruin my day. Bruh. Now, I'm not too worried because I have these other two answers for shift tree. Both are going to have poison type attacks, which is very, very bad news. Um, I really shouldn't have, that was kind of a mistake, I should not have used the Acid Spray at that point, because Poison Jab is going to be super effective to Shift Tree, and Shift Tree can't really take, you know, super effective damage when it's dealt. I probably should have sh saved up the charge and uh, used it on this Hypno here, but we were able to get rid of the Hypno anyway, so, you know, GG's with that. It is what it is. That's just a matter of the lineup and the Pokemon that I went in with versus what Frampty Pants went in with. Um... Yeah, Spiritomb. It's just, I'm not really feeling it so much anymore. I mean, I definitely think I might end up still including it in my six because if they don't have, you know, really good answers for Spiritomb, here's the thing to keep in mind. If they don't have answers directly for Spiritomb in their lineup of six, then Spiritomb can definitely come in clutch. So, you know, don't underestimate it, but don't overrate it either. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to, like, count your entire tour tournament on Spiritomb. At this point, that's going to be a grave mistake because there's a lot of situations that he definitely loses in Shift Tree. is going to be very bad news. Um, most of the, pretty much all the fighters, I think, are going to be very bad news for Spiritomb because they're going to lose. I mean, it can get pretty close in situations with, with shielding, but that's not, you know, you don't necessarily want to have super close matchups against the fighters. And that's another thing to keep in mind, too. Because Spiritomb pretty much loses or is very close to being even with the fighters if you're going to run spear tomb on your team um you should heavily consider since he has fighting as a weakness to run um namely zatu zatu is a very great choice as your um psychic pokemon or just other pokemon that run confusion such as gardevoir uh bronzong or even hypno because you want to have that protection in case it comes you know it, in case it becomes necessary so at this point now you have one dark type Pokemon with with no <laughs> with no dark type charge attacks. He only gets Sucker Punch and then I mean Sucker Punch or Faint Attack, depending on which way you want to go there. But at that point you'd have a dark type Pokemon, a psychic Pokemon to potentially protect Spiritomb. And after that psychic Pokemon, typically with how the meta is working out at this point, you're gonna want to have another fighting type Pokemon. Now if you're going to run a team like that, my recommendation for the fighting type Pokemon specifically right now, I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be Toxicroak. Why? Because Toxicroak, he's granted... Okay, <laughs> it's kind of funny that I'm advocating for Toxicroak now because I've said he's a no in the past. But in that kind of situation, you're going to want Toxicroak because if they have Lucario, that's going to be very bad news for them since you're going to have a Toxicroak. Anyways, I could go on all day. I'm really liking this uh, Nightmare Cup meta. It feels more uh, balanced, and I feel like it has more possibilities for um, team composition and things like that. And, you know, I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. And I hope you enjoyed this video, too. I hope you learned a thing or two. And if you, you know, disagree or agree, feel free to comment down below, and we can talk about it. Um, but anyway, those were the end of the battles. You can see we did pretty well in the practice battles, although, again, I don't know how much I like Spiritomb still at this point. I feel like if you're going to run it, you need to have um, rock, paper, scissors, you know, counters to, to 
kind of support it on your team. Definitely. If you're going to run Spirit Tomb, that's one thing you need to keep in mind. It needs support. That's what I don't like so much about it. Although, you know, you can say the same thing for every Pokemon in this meta is that you need support for it. Um, but anyways, that's the end of the video. So GG's to the video because it's over, but also GG's to Frampty Pants. And thank you very much for battling and doing those test practice battles. Um, um, let me know if you guys want any specific kind of Pokemon covered in the future moving forward. I'm thinking about Chimico, but I don't know how I feel about it. Anyways, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good freaking day.